Welcome to Tilda, here at the Grand Design Show at the NEC. We're just going to do some quick cookery demonstrations using the mushroom steamed basmati rice from Tilda. If none of you are familiar with our steamed basmati range, we have six flavours in the range, consisting of the pure basmati, and the brown basmati, we've got egg fried, which has got little pieces of egg in it, and peas, and then we've also got the pilau, which has got lovely cumin seeds and onions in it, and then we also have lime and coriander, and uh, like I said, the mushroom that we're about to use. So it's all very quick and easy recipes. If you're not familiar with them, they come in a pouch, and all you have to do is rip them open slightly there, and then you put them in the microwave for two minutes, and then you pour them out into your wok, and you have perfect rice every time. So we're just going to cook um, some lovely uh, duck breasts in the wok. No expense spared here, I hear. So you want to get your wok nice and hot before you add in the oil. Don't add in the oil and then heat the wok. There's a little fire hazard waiting to happen. And what we're going to do is uh, pop the duck into the hot oil. Ooh, there's a lot of duck there. This is nice. Now, if you have crispy aromatic duck left over from your Chinese takeaway or anything like that, this is the perfect dish to use it up. You can just add it in towards the end and just heat it through. So hopefully the hob will start working in a second. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in some mushrooms to that. I'm putting in the mushrooms now just because I want those to be nice and soft when they come to eating it. Like so. And you can also put some red pepper in there. How many of you cut a pepper into quarters and then take the seeds out? Quite a few of you? Yes. Oh, I love the way you go, heat does. That's classic, isn't it? Do you do the cooking at all or not? Yeah, you do, but you don't like the way he does it. You don't like peppers. Um, okay. Well, what you do is you take the top off, then the bottom, then you put your knife in at the side like so, and then you turn it onto its side with your, your palm of your hand out of the way of the knife, and you run the knife along, and you sort of unravel the pepper, and you take out the core, and then you don't have any seeds go anywhere and you take the stalk away and then you can use absolutely everything from the uh, pepper itself. So then what we're going to do is we're going to just finely chop that pepper up. Now if I was at home I'd probably do um, thin strips and leave them like this, but because we're going to put it into cups today, I'm going to chop it finely, like so. Then what we're going to do is add that into the duck. And we're going to get that cooking away. Now, I don't mind if the pepper is crunchy in there because, to be honest with you, red pepper is a really good uh, vegetable in salads and everything when it's um, raw anyway. And the whole point of any dish you're cooking is as good as if it's got different textures. So we've got the lovely sort of velvetiness of the duck and of the mushrooms. We've got the crunchiness of the peppers. And then we're going to add in some crunchy bean sprouts as well towards the end. Now, this is the kind of dish that you can use odds and ends up in your fridge which is always very handy. So if you've got onion, you can put onion in there. If you've got um, courgette, it works really well in this dish. Pak choy would be delicious to give it a bit more of an oriental feel to it. Now, I'm just putting ginger in it. How many of you use the peeler for your ginger? Yeah, don't bother. It's quite dangerous, actually, because it's quite knobbly. You just get a teaspoon, and you can even get your child to do that. It's just scrape off the, the actual peelings itself, like so. And then depending on how, um, what's the word, should I say, woody, how woody your ginger is, depends on what I would do with it. If it's quite woody and got a lot of sort of membranes going on in it, I would then um, grate it, but I'm just going to finely chop it. So just be careful when you do that. And then just cut that into strips, and then we'll put that in as well. So you're sampling um, the Tilda mushroom steamed basmati there. Are you liking that? So what we've done is taken basmati rice and we've steamed it for you. And then you just finish it off at home in a microwave for a couple of minutes and away you go. So we're nearly done with the ginger there. We'll put that in to the wok and we'll stir it around. Now, if you've got some garlic, you might want to put some garlic in there. Or some chilli as well. This is the whole point of any dish that goes into wok. You can pretty much put anything in there that you want as long as it's not mouldy in your fridge. 
I'm going to finish off with some bean sprouts. Anyone allergic to nuts? No. Great. I'm going to put some cashew nuts in there. You can chop those up or leave them whole. If you wanted to at the beginning, you could toast them off in your wok, remove them, and then you could um, put them back in at the end. I'm using the mushroom steamed basil rice, rice which you're sampling here. So what I'm trying to show you is you can take this packet, you can serve that as an accompaniment to some meat, something like steak works really well um, because of the mushrooms in there. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is making another complete dish using it. So you still feel like you're cooking, but there's an element of it that we've done for you. And you have perfect rice every single time. So there you go. Like I said, you just Turn that slightly, put it into the microwave, heat it two minutes and then pop it in. Now, if you don't have a microwave, don't worry, you can just stir fry it in the wok. The only reason I've microwaved it beforehand really is for speed so that you can eat and go kind of thing. I'm just going to put some spring onions in there for a bit of colour. And then we're just going to make sure that's heated through. Now that looks quite dry and not very interesting at the moment. Well, we're just about to jazz that all up with a bit of soy sauce. Now, I tend to use light soy sauce, one, because it's saltier, and two, because um, I don't really like dark soy sauce because it colours your food quite a lot. And sometimes, you know, brown food is not very attractive to look at or eat. So that's a little soy in there. I'm going to add a bit of Thai fish sauce in as well. Now the reason I add Thai fish sauce in there is it has a lovely sort of salty flavour to it but it also has a dried sort of shrimp note to it so it adds an extra dimension to it. You know when I say it's like one dimensional food is what I regard as you have one flavour and then it just dies off and there's nothing else to it. And food should be all about textures and layering up different sort of um, flavours as well. Now, this might need some pepper and it might need a bit of sweet chilli but we'll just taste it and see what we think. don't I? But I'm not being surprised. I think because the mushroom has a really good flavour anyway, um, that's what's really good about it. It has uh, a good basis for you to add other ingredients to. I'm going to add a bit of pepper into that and then we're done. And that's it. Now if you wanted to, you could add a bit of sweet chilli sauce into there. That's why I was contemplating whether I was going to do that, but I don't think I am. So, anyone hungry? Want to try a bit? Okay. So we'll serve that up. And I've used sliced up, but for anyone who didn't hear, you could use um, leftover aromatic crispy duck that you might have over from a Chinese the night before. And um, what we're going to do is serve that out to you. And I just finished that off with a bit of Thai fish sauce and soy sauce. We are sampling different rice during the day as well. So if you try the mushroom now, we'll be sampling different ones later on, so do swing by later. We are also doing a show deal here today. Two for 